Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Play Action Podcast presented by Warrior Student Media. I'm Brandon Smith, joined today with my wonderful co-host, TJ Haas. Man, you know, it feels good to be back after a few-week break. Uh, from winter break, you know, it feels good to be back. I'm really excited. And these, these, this whole semester is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it things really have is. changed. Quite a bit. We are now in playoff season. My life has gotten tremendously better, in the, especially in the past 48 hours. And I'm sure what most Bears fans would agree with that. As a Steelers fan, my life has gotten worse. I mean, we made the playoffs. Good. But your draft pick is going to suck. Our draft pick is <laughs> going to be worse. Uh, Kevin Colbert, our general manager, said he's going to be retiring. And Omar Khan won't be the Omar deal. Khan, our vice, pro, our VP of football ops, said, or they've said that he won't be the heir apparent, which is it. <clears throat> and he's gonna, and he is one of the, and, and he is one of the Bears. He's going to interview with Chicago, and he's the, he's uh, Chicago's the only team that has requested an interview. Because I bet you it's because they didn't think. Yeah. So. Or they didn't think he was going to be available. They thought he was going to promote him. And then the news came out that they wouldn't. And now the Bears are going to interview him. And he's probably going to take their job. And he's going to be gone. And the Steelers are going to go downhill. And my life sucks. All right. Justin Fields still exists for me, so that's cool. Uh, (laughs) So today we got our wild card weekend predictions. Or as the NFL calls it, super wild card weekend. I don't like that. Super wild card weekend. Yeah. I'm going to watch the Nickelodeon broadcast of the Niners Cowboys. I'm... It's the Niners Cowboys yeah. game. I actually need to know that. Okay, I am going to watch that. Okay. And we are going to talk about something in that game as we go, but we're going to start with Raiders at Bengals. And Raiders are the fifth seed playing in Cincinnati, who is the fourth seed. This is going to be a good one. These are both these quarterbacks. Play what a story games. for both of these teams. What a story. With Honestly. the Raiders, you, you know, you had the hell and back season. You had with Gruden, and then you had Henry Ruggs, and then you had Damon Arnett even. Even, uh, I mean, this was only a few weeks ago, and he's, st- he's back playing again, but Nate Hobbs with his stuff. I mean, even before the season, you had Josh Jacobs. I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah. And, you know, the Bengals, you know, their second-year quarterback coming off an ACL tear. And the whole school versus chase debate in the draft. I think that got proven to be wrong. I think like it's the I think first, it's, after the first month of the season. I think yeah. people realize that. Jamar Chase has developed into a top-five receiver in football. And oh, yeah. he has completely changed that Bengals offense because the Bengals, last year they didn't head on in a single explosive passing play. And this year, since they have added Chase, and he's the only receiver that they've added to that receiving core, they're the most explosive passing offense. Oh, by far. I think that chemistry between the Stats Burrow, prove it. Yeah, that chemistry between Burrow and Chase definitely had a part to play in it. But I think a lot of it does come from Zach Taylor. Honestly, this is a coach that I don't want to give that guy praise. Okay, I know you. I know either. This is, I mean, I don't but like, this is a guy who no, he obviously knows how to use his offensive personnel to a high level. And I get it that you know Chase has been mostly running just go routes, run for it and hope and bro. But hope he's also able to take a screen to the house, and he's done that. He literally that. did that recently. Yeah, like, what a couple weeks against ago against Kansas City. Yeah, against KC. That might have been a slant, but still. And he made, you know, Juke couple, make a couple guys miss, scores a deep, what was it, like a 60-yard touchdown or something. Like, this offense is explosive with him, and I think with a, I'd probably say slightly below average Raiders secondary, he's going to, he's, I mean, he's going to expose them. Yeah. For them. I mean, they barely made the playoffs this year. Yeah. But. Who do you have for this game? I mean, I I want this game to be close. I want this to be a competitive game. I want, I'd, I'd love to see both of these teams win. It's a shame one of them has to be done after this because I'd love to see them both keep going. I want to see the Raiders win solely for Derek Carr. That's really the only reason I care about the Raiders. Are I you both, picking him? Are you picking the Raiders? I, I, I can't. I, I can't be biased to what I want to happen. i got to be realistic. Yeah. And I think Cincinnati wins this game. I think it could be close, but I honestly see like a multi-score lead win for Cincinnati. After thinking about it, with the Raiders, their defense, and they just, they're a good team, they're a good story, but they don't match up well. So I'm picking Cincinnati. Although, I do think, even if the Raiders lose this game, they have a lot, They I really think they have a bright future. They have a, I don't know if they have a bright future... I like mean, a, a super deep future because I, w- I mean they got a hit on draft picks they have and stuff like that picks. free agency obviously well, well, find a new GM then um, I mean I mean 
Mike Mayock. Yeah, you know what? Though? We don't know that much about Mike, May- May- Mike Mayock as GM because it was all John Gruden before. It was. And then now, obviously, Gruden's gone. So I think, I really think Mayock can hit on some good picks. I mean, unless they don't. We'll be, see. Unless they're, I mean, okay, no, they actually won't be. They can, I don't think they'll end up taking Jordan Davis anymore because the Chargers pick before him. The mm-hmm. Chargers are going to take him because remember, that was the, like, oh, my, that was the Mike Mayock pick for us yep. for, a, for a long time. Now the Raiders are guaranteed at lowest. I think pick. they'll still end up somehow probably taking him because I think the uh, um, I think the Chargers are going to end up taking him Marvin Leal if he's there because I think he's just more fun. You can kind of move him around a little bit and you just send a big D tackle for you. Yeah, but, but, run, but run defense. But we aren't here to talk about the Chargers. No, I mean, Justin Herbert, he's really good at sitting on the couch. And we're going to move on now to Patriots Bills after I take the Bengals. We got Patriots Bills in Orchard Park. This is this is the finale of the season. You know, you had the first game they played when it was terrible weather. Uh, Mac Jones threw the ball three times and didn't even complete all three of them. Ran the ball like crazy, and the Patriots won fourteen to ten. But I, I also want to add that the Patriots proceeded to get the ball ran on them by Jonathan Taylor the week yeah. after a loss. So I think Bill Belichick got his lesson. The the formula for this game for the Patriots. Run the damn ball. Period. Yeah. They have the Bills have an awful run defense. And I think if Mac Jones makes enough plays with his arm throughout the game, I think the Patriots can win. But I don't think Mac Jones can make enough plays, so give me the Bills. Uh I am gonna take the Bills too, and I don't think it's because of you know, I don't. I don't necessarily think it's because it's going to be because of the downsides of New England. No, I but think, I think Josh Allen. I think Josh Allen's also going to go. To I think. I was going to say. I think Josh Allen's going to prove that he should be an MVP finalist. And I'm. Be, I mean, obviously, the playoffs don't determine that. I know, but they I think say it doesn't. But I, it, you know what I'm saying? It's going to reassure it. Well, Aaron Rodgers is a jerk, so he won't win MVP. Yeah, he can't win MVP. Tom He's Brady. Is, Tom league. Brady's too old, so he can't win MVP. It's probably going to be like Cooper Cup or something. Yeah, or, you know, or Jonathan Taylor, you know, Colts didn't even make the playoffs. <laughs> losing to the Jags, imagine. Imagine losing to the Jags. Thank you, Jags, for putting Pittsburgh in the playoffs, by the way. You know, big praise out to you guys. But the Bills, they just, they have so many weapons on offense, and they've been running the ball a lot more. And they're averaging almost 180 rush yards a game recently. And that's big credit to Brian Dable, knowing his personnel. And a lot of those rushing yards have come with Josh Allen. Josh Allen, you asked me the other day, the, and or you said this to me the other day, the two best dual threat quarterbacks in the NFL are Josh Allen and Justin Herbert. Yeah. I, I said Josh Allen is... I think I think Josh Allen is... Josh Herbert, Allen is a dual threat. Herbert, I can understand why you'd say no. He's not a dual I, threat. He has his running ability as a tool, not I a think, threat. I think Josh Allen is the the like definition of dual threat quarterback. Because he is great at both. And he and he, it's crazy because he'll like take risks too in running ball. Like he'll try to like hurdle people. Yeah, he has the. He, I love Josh Allen. I love watching Josh Allen. I think he might be my favorite quarterback in the league. Just from a fan standpoint, watching. He's him fun play, to watch. He he can he can juke people out. He can spin people out, make people miss while running. He could throw a seventy yard bomb right afterwards. It's insane what he can do. So when when you look at. I'm sure the first player you think of when you think of dual threat is Lamar Jackson, just because no. that's what the, that's what the media's kind of pushed. But Lamar Jackson, oh no, his arm, shiver me timbers. His Big arm Ben has him. better passing stats than Lamar this season. Look it up. And Big Ben gets all the hate while Lamar's still considered a top ten quarterback. It's insane to me. Lamar's not top ten. He's not top fifteen. I'd be willing to say that too. He he had twenty eight hundred passing yards, sixteen passing touchdowns, thirteen interceptions. I don't get that, paid enough for this. That is bad. That is a bad quarterback. If you saw, should they extend him? Not to a big deal. <laughs> no way. No, no, not. That's a running back you're paying big money, <laughs> and you we've proven that running backs don't deserve big money. The Bears are about to pay David Montgomery. I'm not liking this. Get out of here with the top fifteen Lamar quarterback hype. I I don't see it. I don't see it anymore. It's insane to me. Yeah, the Patriots. Big Ben over. All right, so we're, uh, I'm taking the Bills. By the way, yes. just probably should throw that out there. I'm taking the Bills. So now we got my team, Steelers. 
in KC. 49 to nothing. We're getting blown out. 49 to nothing. Uh, hey, 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 TJ Watt's going to like stop him. At least Kansas way. City's nice enough to throw a nice retirement party for Big Ben. I'm just yeah. glad they're being nice. Yeah, you know, that's always a positive. I mean, Big Ben literally said, we we'll probably won't win. Let's just have fun. <laughs> he literally said that. But, hey, I, okay, that's, I, I don't think he literally meant that word per word. I think he was just, don't, don't you give me that. No, word. but I'm just saying he's not wrong. He's not wrong. But this is this, again, I'm, I know I'm reaching a little bit here, but this is the same mentality Pittsburgh had in 05 when we were the sixth seed. And Big Ben was all. And Big, Big yeah. Ben was also sixteen years younger. Yeah, we had a worse team than we do now. I'd say the twenty. I'd say the I'm not f- caught up on Steelers history. I'd, I'd say the 05 Steelers team is probably worse than this uh, 2021 Steelers team. And we had that same mentality going in. We're probably going to be first round as like exits. Let's just have fun while we do it. Who won the Super Bowl that year? You want to say it? You want to say it? Or what? Or want me to? You can say it. Yeah, I'll just say. It. The Steelers, won, as a six seed, we won the Super Bowl. That's impressive. It is. That's very And impressive. I'm not saying that we have that potential now. but Because you don't. Big, big men won't. Well, no, okay, I'm not saying we don't have the potential, but it's really unlikely. Considering we've beaten the, we've beaten the Bills. We've beaten the Titans. We've Okay, we've gotten destroyed by the Bengals, but that's besides the point. <laughs> uh, and the Chiefs. And again, we'll probably lose, considering this game they'll have Kelsey, and they didn't even have Kelsey when they played us the first time. But I think if anything has come out of Pittsburgh's season this year is that we've kept basically every game close within ten points. TJ Watt depoy. Uh, obviously, I mean, I shouldn't. I didn't even think I had to say that. But the nerds say Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald. But no, Trayvon Diggs had eleven interceptions. No way. Trayvon Diggs not top fifteen. Thank you. I don't get paid enough for this. <laughs> He's not top 15. I, 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 I don't know. Maybe he might be top 15, but he's not top 10. I'd say he's top 10 because of the interceptions alone. I yeah, he does, all, he does do a lot for his team, but he's not a top coverage corner. But when you combine it, I guess he's, he might. He has a very big impact. But Okay, but let, let, let's stop getting off topic here. we got to go back to the Steelers game when they're about to beat the Chiefs. Guess who I'm taking for this game? I'm taking the Chiefs. I'm not stupid. I told, like I said earlier. I mean, you might be stupid, but I'm glad you're not that stupid. Hey, hey, man. hey! Remember when you said Caleb Williams top three Heisman candidate? Who said that? You. Uh-huh. All right. I don't who know you, about that? I, mean, I don't even know why I'm asking this, but who would you take in this game? Uh, Javante Williams. What does that even mean? I'll take the Chiefs in this game. Uh, just literally every reason ima- imaginable. They're better. They're better. They're better in every other way. No, they're not. No, th- their offense. No, they're no Steelers running backs are better than the Chiefs running backs. We at least got that. Is Edward Tillery even going to play this game? All the jokes aside, I don't even know. And even if he is, don't he's tell not me. That don't good. you even tell me he's better than Najee? Like, come on. Don't no. even go there. <laughs> Do you think Javante's better than that? Than, uh, no. Not, than uh, Clyde. Yes. Okay. Javante Williams is a top fifteen running back right now. My guy. I do Finally know. turning the page. I've never disagreed. Not top 10, though. Not yet. Okay. Top 15. So, not yeah. Top one. So, we have the Raiders. Or no, not the Raiders. The Bengals, the Bills, and the Chiefs. We both took all of those teams. Yes. I mean, I, mean, I think the only one that could be an upset would be the Patriots game, considering Belichick knows how to play Buffalo, which was a really good point brought up to me. Do you think the Raiders Patriots can beat the Bengals, like, at all? No. Damn. Okay. I just think the Bengals are an all around better team. All right. Way better receiving core, better running back, better defense, better coaching. Uh, Respect better like quarterback, Versace. <laughs> uh, better offensive line, better. De- yeah, literally, I think the Bengals are better in every way imaginable, which is funny because they have the same record. So I can't really back that up completely, but look at the stats. It's pretty similar. I will say, honest. shout out AJ Cole. Best punter in the league. For the Raiders, best punter in the league. Actually, sorry, second best punter in the league. Behind him. Presley Harvin, dog. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go now to the Not NFC. Wrong. Whatever. E- Eagles versus Bucks. I- I'll let no, you go first. No, no. I was actually gonna let you go first because you have some interesting takes for this. Game. Yeah, Eagles are winning this game. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that's without a doubt. <laughs> Eagles are winning this game. <laughs> I can't handle this, man. I hate the Eagles, but the Eagles are winning this game. Eagles are my second, t- my second favorite team in the whole league, and I'm still taking Tampa Bay. Yeah, the Eagles will win this game. Why? Explain yourself. Why? Okay. Darius Slay, top five cornerback this year. And and the Bucks only have Mike. They, I know Scott, Scotty Miller's good. Uh, who else do they have? Tyler Johnson, baby. Second year receiver out of Minnesota, my guy. Oh, no. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Evans is going to get shut down. No, he's not. Yes, he is. He's going to have at least a touchdown. Well, yeah, because he's a red zone merchant. He's going to have four touchdowns. I wouldn't say that, but like, no. he's going to have, a, he's gonna have I do, But seriously, I think the Eagles match up really well. But here's what the game's going to come down to, and it, and this could pose a problem. Jalen Hurts is going to have to go win this game. He lived. I love Jalen Hurts. I do, too. Love Jalen Hurts. He's going to have to be the reason they win. But I could also... And, and I, I, I was being a little satire earlier. I, I, I But the, the, I do. I am picking the Eagles. But the Bucks can, of course, win this game. They have Tom freaking Brady. Um, this... this, this Eagles' run game is going to be very underrated going into it. But the Bucks also have the best run defense in football. I mean, not with Levante David out. He, he's coming back. Is he for sure? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he got, he got he's activated. He's still listed on, uh, as being on IR. They opened his window today, so he might not come back. But if Okay, fine. If he comes back, then never mind. But if he doesn't, that's... Like, that's a big he, loss. He, he's like the best run defender on that team. Easily. Vita Vey is better, but... I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't know about Vita that. Is awesome. I don't know. I think... No. Mm-mm. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Oh, also, I just want to point out real quick. Uh, obviously, I'm taking the Bucks. Are you taking the Eagles? I'm assuming. Yes, I'm taking the Eagles. I'm officially. I would just like to point out that I know who you said. You were said, "Oh no, about Tyler Johnson when he's listed above Scotty Miller." Is Why, he really? Yes, he's the number two receiver right now. Scotty Miller's number five. Five. That's weird. That because all all jokes aside, they had a. Uh, I remember last year in the playoffs, Scotty Miller made a lot of plays in the playoffs. Especially against the Packers. He had that la- uh, and, a half, uh, and a half touchdown. But no, they have Prashad Perryman at four, and then someone named Cyril Grayson at three. I mean, he's going to move down. He's- he, caught the, he caught the game-winning touchdown against the Jets. Yeah, but I don't think yeah. it determines him to be moved down. He's been averaging like 85 or 90 yards a game. Perryman over. Bears legend, Prashad Perryman. I love Bears an active legend. Well, of course. All right, so but yeah, I, but taking the Eagles. Yeah, I am taking the Eagles. I, I do think it'll be close. I the Eagles will win this game to me because Leonard Fournette could still be out. That's big deal. He will be out. I think he he also got act, he also got put in the return window, so he might he might not play. Levante David might not play, but they also both might play. So we don't know about that, but. Actually, no. Knowing, hearing about Aunt, at least Antonio Brown saying how they would like throw away their injury reports and stuff like that—not literally, but like disregard them—I wouldn't even be surprised if they came back, even if they weren't fully healthy. Well, yeah. So uh, I would expect both of them to play. Free AB tilts backwards. Oh God! Players <laughs> out to AB. Yeah. But no, I think it's gonna be a classic. God, I wish we were. I wish we were here the day after that happened. Dude, that that would have been awesome. <laughs> I just to hear our raw reactions because time's fast. Ab Ab throws his shoulder pads, throws his shirt and gloves into the crowd, walks <laughs> off, says on a podcast what the next day that he considered mooning the crowd like. Oh my this god! Dude is off his rocker, bro. For real. I don't even understand. I hope he gets the help he needs. He obviously needs it. He also got. I also want to mention that this new USFL league. Um, one of the head coaches is Todd Haley, who was one of the uh, Steelers coordinators when AB was there. Todd Haley had reached out to AB saying, "Hey man, I want you to come play for me." And AB said no. AB didn't respond to the text message. It showed the host of the podcast he was on, and he said, "Man, get out of here." <laughs> <laughs> AB is gone crazy. Andy was out getting haircuts with Kanye yesterday. Ooh, so. But it's Kanye. Do you blame him? It's Kanye. I love Kanye. So, All right. Eagles are winning. Don't care what your take is. I want, trust me, I want, if the Eagles okay. win, if the Eagles win and the Steelers lose, Pittsburgh gets picked 19. If, the, yeah. if both teams lose, we get picked 20. I'd rather have the better pick. So, I'm rooting for the Eagles the whole way, but. Now we got Niners, Cowboys, and th- 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 there's one big thing I want to talk about. Uh, what do you got? First, I'm picking the Cowboys. You can yeah, make your too. pick. Okay. Me too. That's, I thought that, I'm not going to say it was, actually, no. You know what? I think this is going to be the, cl- the best wild card game this week. I think it's, or I shouldn't say wild card game this week. It's going to be the best playoff game this week. I think it's going to be the most competitive. Yeah, I could see that. Because, so, you know, you got Kyle Shanahan who's a top five coach going into this game. Who? Kyle Shanahan. Never heard of him. Kyle Shanahan, top five coach. I just know of him as Mark Trestman with Yeezys. Well, this was like, you were the one who said he was a top five coach to me before. So, maybe you should like. What kind of stuff are you pulling out of? What the? <laughs> um, All right, what do, you, what, do you got about, what do you got for this game? So, last year. They started the Nickelodeon thing, and they yeah. with the MVP, Mitch Trubisky won the MVP, and it's a travesty that Patriots Bills isn't this 
the Nickelodeon game. So, so we got to start a campaign here. We got to start a campaign for the MVP. There's only one person it can be. Jimmy G. Well, obviously. It's got, we got I was to, really hoping you were going to say Jimmy G. It's got to be Jimmy G. We got to go for the absolute mid-level quarterbacks who wear number 10, and we got to keep the streak going. No, no. I think what we need to do is we need to pick the, just the most mediocre player on the winning team. And what was the, it was the losing team last year, to be fair. Okay, well, we got to just pick the most mediocre player out here yeah. out of both teams combined. And I don't see an, an option here better than Josh Norman, who I feel like is the most mediocre player no. in the entire league right now. Is he even on the team? I thought he yeah, got he cut. He's the starting corner right now for them. He is the starting corner. Next Boys by 60. Okay, my point. I think Josh Norman deserves to win the MVP. I don't care what you say. And the game hasn't even happened yet. But let's actually get into like, the specifics <laughs> of this game. There's something I've been wanting to talk about on the podcast since I found out about it. And obviously we haven't had an episode until this episode. But remember the beginning of the year when Brandon Ayuk had the whole like some off. Like, it was, Dude is balling. He has better stats this year than last year. I think both, both five touchdowns, he has like 100 He's yards. balling, He's baby. Good. One of my favorite young receivers. I liked him a lot coming out of college. Uh, 49ers, I believe, traded up even a few spots to take him. Made the, made no. Him. Yeah. 31st overall pick. They, they lost Super Bowl, so it's 31st pick in the draft. No, no, they did trade up. I know for a fact they traded up because I remember thinking, oh, man, they traded up there, but then traded down with the ta- with Tampa Bay. They had two first-rounders. They did. It was only a few spots, but they did trade up because the 31st pick was, uh, I believe it was Jeff Gladney for Minnesota. They were tripping. No, because they traded down. They traded up with Minnesota. Look it up. But I think he's going to be a, a, one of the best weapons here. Dallas' run defense isn't amazing, but it's not terrible. I think Elijah Mitchell can have a good game. What the hell? Was I right? Yeah. What did I tell you? Because I'm a genius. Where was Brandon? Keep going. Um, but this... Uh, I, I, I'm blanking. Do you remember... Do you know the 49ers defensive coordinator? I'm blanking on his name. No. But he's had a... He's pr- like produced like a top 10 defense when these guys are fully healthy. And... Guys like Nick Bosa, guys like Eric Armstead, guys like Fred Nick Warner. Nick Bosa, of all course, incredible. Nick Bosa, of course, isn't going to get the same attention for Comeback Player of the Year, but he, damn, he should. He deserves it. Let's, let's be clear. We, we can both agree that the top three, in no particular order, Nick Bosa, Joe Burrow, Dak Prescott. Yep. Right? Yep. Okay. I think we could agree that Dak Prescott's three. Robert Quinn. Robert, okay, but... No. What they, they rarely give the award to a player who just had it down near the year before. Yeah. Except for, like, did the, 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 yeah, the last thing they did that was to, like, Philip Rivers. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Philip Rivers. Yeah, Philip Rivers had, like, a terrible year, and then he played good, and then had got comeback player of the year. But it's going to be a good game. Give me Dallas, though, because Dallas is better. I'm, I know you guys can't see it, but I'm currently wearing my Amari Cooper jersey for a reason. Our, my only problem with Dallas, and I've had this pro- problem with them for – Couple months now. I don't know about a couple months. A few weeks though. Is that they're too good? Yeah, I know. Dak Prescott, his I know he's played really well the past few games, mm-hmm. but he has had games this year where he has not been good. I can counter that for you. the The Cowboys this season are undefeated when they have over a hundred rushing yards. That is a big help. And as I a think team, or when Zeke has a hundred, I, I believe it was as a team is what I had seen. And I do... Read option deck. Read option deck. Shut up. Okay. I still genuinely believe that even though I'm not as high on Zeke as others are, I still think he's a top 10 running back. And I think Zeke Pollard duo is a top 5 running back duo in the league. And I think that's a more... I I think that's saying more about Pollard than it is Zeke. Because I think Pollard is an incredible backup. I think... I I would be willing to say Pollard is a top 3 backup running back. I think Kareem Hunt... Alexander Madison, Pollard are the top three. Backup run, You're number two someone. backs. Who? A.J. Dillon? I think he's four. Okay. But I think it's close. Don't get me wrong. I'll go. I mean, Actually, no. I'll throw, I'll throw him at three because uh, Hunt's been injured. We'll make it Madison, Pollard, and A.J. Dillon. But I think these are both two really good teams. I think Trayvon Diggs is going to hopefully play well. Micah Parsons is going to play amazing. He's getting, or Trayvon Diggs is getting exposed this game when I'm ready for it. By Debo, I'd love to see it happen. Because I love Debo. Cowboys fans, they just do these this to me. 
They start overrating players who start flashing. Okay, I'm gonna be completely honest though. I did. Pre- I I'm I'm not saying he had a breakout year considering he's let up over a thousand yards in the air. But I did say I did believe that Trayvon Diggs was gonna have the best breakout season out of a year two yeah. player. I don't even think he, like you, it's weird though because like even at Bama he wasn't that good of a ball hawk. No, he wasn't. If anything, he was a better coverage corner than a ball hawk corner, and it completely flipped in the NFL yeah, like, for some reason. Like now he's you can make a case to say he's a bad cover corner. No, but okay, I'm, gonna, I'm also going to say this real quick, just to like make my, what I just said, like sound believable, because I mean, pe- if I just say I think Trayvon Dix is going to have a breakout year, I, I could easily be BSing that, and people will be like, oh, just because he's playing good. I thought LaVinsco Chanel was going to have a great year this year, too. Me too. That sucks. So, I just, I, I mean, obviously Jacksonville isn't playoff, I mean, the considered number one overall pick, but I just want to Urban say, Meyer. Best coach in the league. All right, so you're taking Dallas, I'm taking Dallas. Let's move into the Cardinals- uh, Rams game. This is the last wild card game. Monday night football. This is going to be a good one. I'm honestly really happy that they moved uh, into a three-day span for yeah. wild card. I like I like having that extra day of games. Especially since we have no school that day. I think that's going to be a nice way to finish out the four-day weekend. And the Bulls play that day during the day. I'll be nice and happy. Uh, Bulls suck, so <laughs> Sixers on top. Anyway. Uh, well, Sixers just traded Ben Simmons, so. What? No, I'm kidding. I <laughs> um... So, this is, is going to be a good one. This will be this a, is going to be a good one. Said, this is going to be um, both offenses, super high power. Problem with the Cardinals, they don't have a top 10 receiver in the league right now. Only because D hops out. Well, that's what I'm oh, Okay. What, actually, no, he might, might be no, back. No, it's not till later. Are you sure? Because yeah. they, they had said his plan, their plan was to bring him back for playoffs. Yeah, it's like later in the playoffs. It's like NFC Championship game or Super Bowl. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know about that one. But he ain't going to play this game because they didn't open his window yet. So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest here. Got to watch out for it. I think Rondell Moore can have a big game. Yes, that's my guy. I like Rondell Moore a lot. I loved him uh, in the draft. I didn't. I won't lie. I didn't know. Right, right when the pick was made, did not like it. I didn't because I just didn't think. I thought that receiving core was stacked enough to where another receiver wasn't needed. But they've been using him a lot more than I had expected. They've been using I, I'd say they've been using him just as much as Christian Kirk. Yeah. Which shocks me. I mean, different role, but same usage, which, again, was... Okay. When he's been on the field, yes. And so I think it's going to be a good game. I'm picking the Rams because Cliff Kingsbury deserves to lose his job. Don't even start with me, man. I don't... I like Cliff Kingsbury. But, uh, no, I'll, uh, and I, I, I'm serious about this. And Cliff Kingsbury, it's proven. His team's... Fall apart at the end of seasons. Always have. Yeah. Okay, I don't think I think not just the NFL. No, I think this year is a better example of that than last year, considering Kyler Murray did get injured, and the, that's when the decline happened. And okay. Kyler Murray got hurt again this year, and they started losing games. Yeah. Okay. So why are we blaming this on uh, because because he he's been the coach of those two teams, and I I know Colt McCoy played pretty good. Hey, three. You know what? I did, I'm seeing a report right now, actually, from three minutes ago, that Cliff Kingsbury expects Kyler Murray to play, quote, the best game of his career in his playoff debut against L.A. So, <laughs> okay. Cliff Kingsbury is always right. Okay. Um, I need, I'm are, gonna, are, are you I'm, taking the Cardinals? Uh, I'm taking the Cardinals, and I'll tell you why. And that is because Pitt native, Steelers running back legend, James Conner, Pro Bowl running back Ooh, this year. That's so team. weird. I hate him. I'm upset that he was off the. T- he's not on the team anymore. But I love seeing him succeed. It makes me feel. I'm good sure you do, but I'm. Let's be honest. You probably didn't deserve the Pro Bowl. No, I did. Over who? What do you mean? I think I think out of the three NFC running backs, he deserved it just as much as I. I think Alvin Kamara didn't deserve it, and I think Cordell Patterson should have been in his place. But I think. Okay. How, for how much Connor's done to this offense, and he has been both a like a. Bruiser back and a receiver back. He's been kind of, uh, I don't want to... Kingsbury knows how to use it. Yes, that's true. And that's he's a big part he, of the offense. He's been a goal... Not not completely, but he has been a bit of a goal line merchant, but not like... No, I'm like, pretty sure last week he had a 20-yard receiving touchdown. Uh-huh. So, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that to discredit what you're saying, because I agree a, a good portion of his touchdowns have come off a goal line. But a good portion of his overall pro- uh, production has been in the receiving game as well. And I think the fact that they know how to use him well 
is really telling of how this team offense overall just works. Yep. I think it's going to be a good game. I think it could be good. I, I think Stafford loses them this game, if I'm being honest. I could see that happening. I really and could. And I love Stafford. With Stafford's been bad I recently. Love, I love Stafford. I thought he was the most underrated player in NFL history at one point. Now he's kind of become overrated. A little bit. Not by much, though. I mean, I still think they won the trade. I don't think so. Really? Because if they don't Depends on who they draft. Depends on who the Lions draft, I should say. And who's there. Because if there was a player there that could have been very beneficial to L.A., then sucks to suck. But I think this is going to be a really good game. These teams have played each other twice, and I believe they're 1-1 one one against each other. Or are the Cardinals 2-0? Oh? I don't know. I Let me look. You'll have to look at it. Yeah, you, you keep going on what you, uh, if you have anything else to add. The Rams, hey, they've gotten more continuity recently playing on defense. They're getting more used to playing with each other, mm-hmm. Jalen Ramsey, Aaron Donald. That's a really good point. Leonard yeah. Floyd, uh, Von Miller. Those guys are all learning how to play with each other. Uh, Taylor Rapp, though, unfortunately. Um, no. No, not Taylor Rapp. Jordan Fuller. Jordan Fuller. What well, What was the injury? I, I don't even... know, but he's out for the year. They brought in... Eric Weddle. Eric Weddle, dude. Dude, he was a beast. He retired two years ago. I th- Almost three. Yeah, end of 2019, right? That's uh-huh. that's crazy to me that they brought him back. I'm happy. Oh, okay. Um, let me just finish. I was gonna say I'm happy that he's gonna be able. To- he's playing again. That's cool. And also, they are one and one against each other. Okay, Our that's Cardinals uh, in early October won 37 to 20, and then in middle of December, Rams won 30 to 23. So I think the Cardinals have probably been more dominant. But I also want to mention that in that Rams card, the second Rams Cardinals game, guys like Ramsey were out. Dar- oh yeah, Darrell, it was that Darrell, COVID game. Darrell Henderson was out, and they surprisingly won. So um, another big thing for the Rams. That shows they had depth. The Rams are they added a big piece for their offense. So cool, Cam Akers, baby. I love Cam Akers. I am so happy to see that. And he played. He played. He played pretty good. Did he play? Yeah. I honestly didn't even watch the game. He so played pretty decent. Know. That's that's what I like to hear. Uh, Man, you missed a hell of a game. How is it? I, I he's still, not the prominent running back. He's not. But they're he will be next year. No, no, of course. But okay. they're not using just one running back like they used him. Uh, I'm I'm about to pull it up right now. It still blows my mind. Like. Like, How like, fast he came back. Yeah. How, I just, I'm happy that he did. I'm happy he got cleared and he's playing now. But how is that physically possible? Like, I don't know. It's weird. Like, I don't feel like that is physically possible. But he did it and I'm highly impressed. This is going to be a good game. So, okay. Hey, okay, he didn't play that well. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was going to say, I feel like I would have heard if he played well. Or yeah, not. he didn't even average one yard per carry. Ooh. But Yeah, so he did not play well. But he he had ten receiving yards, so but they, they didn't use, they didn't use him that much. They probably just went. They probably barely used him and eased him into the game. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna go. I still think I expect his role to go up as the season. Goes Michelle on. Michelle will still be the primary back in this game, and I know you just said as the season goes on, but this is gonna be their last game. So at least what I'm expecting. If the, yeah, if their season goes on, uh, and so I'm gonna take Arizona. And okay, I just want to mention. I know my picks were boring. Considering they were all the higher seeds except for this Cardinals game, but I think like I think the Eagles could win. I think the 49ers could win. Yeah, I mean Pittsburgh's gonna win, but I had to pick the Chiefs. <laughs> um, Raiders probably won't win. I think Patriots maybe could win. So yeah, I think if there's I think if there's a conference that will have most of the upsets, it's gonna be the NFC. I, I can see that because I feel like these games are all competitive. It's very competitive. But I also think you and me are very like we're really underplaying the Bucks without realizing it. Don't care. I was gonna say Eagles I don't care either, but the Bucks are still gonna win. The Eagles are winning. All right. Well, so I've just one more time through. Uh, I took the Bengals over the Raiders, Bills over Patriots, Chiefs over Steelers for the AFC. So did I. I did all those three. And then I took the Bucks over the Eagles, Cowboys over 49ers, Cardinals over Rams. Although I think all those games could be flipped, and yep. I wouldn't be surprised. I, so I have Eagles. Over the Bucks, Cowboys over the Niners, and Rams over the Cardinals. So we, I was saying for weeks too that the Eagles would beat the Bucks. You and did, you know, yeah. He, I, so I'm staying with it. Nope, you have been saying that for a while, so I can respect that you're sticking with it. And I think it's gonna be a good wild card weekend. Awesome. It feels, it feels good to be back recording again. You know, jumping right in. I think timing worked out perfect for the wild card to be right when we come back. Yeah, I love. I 
I'm, it feels good to be back. It really does. I know I just said that, but it does feel good to be back here and talking about football again. And then as the season ends, you know, we're going to come up with some fun little concepts and we hope to have some guests on. Yep. And nothing finalized, but we love, we'd love to have some guests. But that's going to do it for this episode of the Play Action Podcast presented by Warrior Student Media. He's TJ Hawes. I'm Brandon Smith. Have a good day.